Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to talk a bit about Beamer Code. So Beamer Code is an app available on both iOS and Android. And the whole purpose of Beamer Code is to unlock slash change features available in your car, all by changing settings in the computer. Um, the amount of options available to you will be different based on what you option out your vehicle to be. But a lot of key functions are editable for almost all 4 series, 3 series, M4s, M3s, etc. So without any ado, let's get started. So as you see, we first need to go and get an OB2 ad adapter. That's what allows us to, con to connect our phone to the car through the OBD2 port. Um, link to what I use down below. And next, you'll need to actually get the Beamer Code app. Um, the app is not free, but it's well worth it. So, let's get started. So to start, we'll need some the Beamer Code app. Open it. If it's your first time, you need to go and click the gear and make sure you have the right adapter because if you don't have the right adapter, it may not properly connect to the OBD2 Bluetooth adapter. Also, make sure that in your settings, the Bluetooth is actually connected. Um, so, opening Beamer Code, click connect. It's going to click show connecting and you'll say please select a vehicle so make sure you select the right vehicle um, for my, in my case the 4 series and m4 use almost the near identical settings so that's why it's grouped together click continue and then it's going to go read the vin read all the settings on the vehicle and it's going to populate all the list of control units it's going to take a while so let's give it a minute All right, so now we see a list of all of our control units. We're gonna go through all of them one at a time. So first, let's start with the advanced craft safety module. Select the control units, and it's gonna read the coding data just like when it initially loads, so it's gonna take a while. All right, finally. So now, in the advanced craft safety module page, you'll see that all the features are divided into subsections. Starting the first two sections, PDC, your parking distance control. Pretty much, you could change at what speed or what distance you've already driven for the parking distance play. So, like, you know, the radar that shows, like, how far you are or if you're about to hit something. That's for that screen to disappear. Um, same thing with the rear view camera. What distance and what speed for it, that screen to di disappear. Um... I'm fine with the default settings, but you could go in there, change how far you want it. Keep in mind everything's in meters, kilometers per hour, so uh, do that conversion or Google or something. And for this part, seatbelt reminder, that's the only option here that I actually do change. Um, I make sure that make sure the seatbelt reminder for the driver's seat and the passenger seat is disabled. Um, pretty much what that does is disable the annoying chime for when you don't have your seatbelt on. Sometimes when I'm just getting in the car, I just want to move it a little bit. That chime is really annoying. As well as the, um, if I put something on the passenger seat. All right, um, looking through it, seatbelt indicator. Yeah, like, I rather, the indicators that that's the symbol on your dash, I'd rather just keep that on. Um, that doesn't bother me. Um, initial seatbelt reminder after start, yeah, that's fine. Um, so when you're done making all the changes, and this applies to all the um, other control units, what you want to do is click code and just give you a bunch of warning. Make sure you know CarPlay is off, um, battery mode, or make sure the car is fully charged. Um, for what I understand, airplane mode doesn't really matter, but if you do get a phone call during the coding, it might mess it up. So be careful. And then we just click start coding. What's going to do is prepare coding and it's going to write the change to the car. All right, and then you'll see that Beamer Code has finished coding. So restart the ECU in the car. You'll see a bunch of warning messages on the dash. That's completely fine. Just got to restart the car after it restarts the ECU and all the warnings and the lights on the dash will disappear. Perfect. 
Right. Now we go back. Um, air conditioning as our second control unit. Um, this one's relatively small. Awesome. All right, so for the air conditioning, a lot of the settings are self-explanatory. Circulation settings. Uh, if you wanted to remember your last air conditioning AC setting, there you go, automatically air circulations. Apply auto to manual mode, all this stuff. Personally, I don't really touch anything. I'm, I think the AC settings are fine the way it is, but feel free to code whatever you want. All right, next, body domain controller. That's a big one. So I was just waiting for it to load. All right, so finally, finished loading, and we'll see that the first subsection in BDC, body domain controller, is ambient lighting. So um, with this, you'll, you'll be able to code a lot more different colors that are available in your um, infotainment. Um, and when you code it, keep in mind, it will take place of the bronze. So when you click bronze, it will actually be the color of your code. It just won't show up. So keep, do keep that in mind. Um, I personally, I'm not sure you can see, personally only use lilac. It's my color. Um, so none of the ambient colors really matter to me. All right, next we have brake force display. Brake, brake force display is pretty much what enables the brake lights to flash um, when you're under hard braking. Um, five kilometers per hour and so that's the what speed will activate so you have to be going five kilometers per hour for it to actually activate and activation force so that at what rate are you braking for it to actually activate so five meters per second squared that's it's decently fast actually but yeah but weak braking or you could go hard braking so like you only want it to flash when it's when you're slamming on the brake on the highway there you go so um, I'll keep at the fall weak braking so it's pretty sensitive, you could say. Next, we have doors and windows, mm, horn. So if you do, if you, pretty much you could disable the honking if you lock the windows and doors when the car is still on. Um, personally, I like to do disable it. Uh, time into automatic lock. Two minutes, fine for me. Pretty much the car will lock itself. You could change it to shorter, or you could disable it. Uh, I don't think you could disable it, but you could get sh quicker or shorter. Um, two minutes, fine. For me, um, window, lift, or interruption when opening door. So, pretty much, you know that if you open these doors, because they're frameless, when you when you open it, it will stop going up. Um, that's fine with me. I just don't, don't want to risk like breaking a window or something. Who knows? Um, the full driving mode, comfort. This doesn't really apply for the M4 itself. But you could control like, you know, Eco, Sports Plus, Adaptive. That's for more of the, um, your 330s, 430s, 440s, and 340s. Pretty much when they don't, unlike the M4, they don't have like Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus. You could change it. You could change which mode is startup in. Um, we don't necessarily have that exact option in the M cars because you have to choose, you know, Sport, each component like suspension, steering, engine in which component so that doesn't really apply so just don't won't even touch that um lighting rain light sensitivity all of this hazard warning sign after emergency braking i know that's an option in europe when you slam on the brakes activate hazards i'll uh, keep that off fog life off and high beam um m cars don't for what I understand m4s m3s don't have fog lights so not really an option here but you see it's active but because that's the default but won't really apply here. External light switch off allowed activated. So you, I think that's when you, you're allowed to turn off the car. So yeah, we're, we could you could go and turn off the lights, all lights, even though the car's running at night. That's fine. Uh, automatic light control. What is this? To prevent low beam, prevent lighting switch where automatic light is active. Um, I, I've never touched that. I don't think I need to. Don't know what that is, but feel free to experiment. <laughs> all right, mirrors, automatic tilt. So if you move the mirror slider all the way to the driver's side, when you go in reverse, the passenger side mirror automatically tilt down too, so you know like what's on the ground and stuff. Um, for me, seventy percent tilt is fine. I know for SUVs and stuff, you might want to like lower the seventy percent tilt. 
Mm, unfolding mirrors are convenient opening and folding mirrors are convenient. So, yeah, so that's when you open the car, the mirrors fold out, lock the car, the mirror fold in. Um, those are options that used to not be available in the infotainment in older generations, the F series BMWs, those you have to code, but now in the G series, um, those are available in the infotainment, the set car settings. So you don't even need to touch this. And the next is seat heating, it's just default seat heating. Um, I usually don't touch it. All right, tailgate. So this is pretty much, you could change that if you, if you want any longer delay, no delay for opening tailgate. I think 0.5, this is the default. I'm not really gonna change it, I'm fine with that. Open tailgate only after unlock only. That's pretty much you have to unlock the car before you can open the tailgate with the remote. That's stupid for me. I think that's unnecessary, so that's not active for me. Welcome nights and darkness only. Uh, you can enable that if you don't want the welcome the headlights to open during the daytime. That's fine. I, so um, I think I did make a change. So actually, you know what? Yeah. So I think I made a change, but you know what? I'm not gonna code that. That's not instant for me. I don't want to go through all the time. But same thing with the previous control unit. Just click code. All right. So we just discard a change. That's that simple. If you don't want to personally just discard it. All right, next one. We have the engine control unit. The DME. Now, it's very limited stuff you could change here. But pretty much it's more of like the battery and the start stop. Um, by default, it's all active, I, th I believe. So uh, it'll automatically remember if your start stop is off. Uh, I don't know why anyone want to turn off, but feel free to if you don't want the memory. And we have battery, so you may need to uh, use Beamer code. I think you use Beamer code to code when you, a new battery whenever you get a new battery. Because um, uh, there's difference. If you put in a new battery without coding it, there might be some errors by overcharging the batteries. All right. Next, head unit. That's also another big one. All right. So we have the head unit control unit. So what first option, acoustic confirmation. I believe that's one. Um, active, that's for um, pretty much the car will give like that annoying chime. I leave it active. Uh, maximum startup, 25%. That pretty much even if you crank the radio up all the way, next time you turn off the car and turn on, it'll be 25%. So this way I don't blow them out my eardrums if I was crazy the night before. All right, um, Bowers, Bowers and Wilkins sound system, that's an option you could, um, I think that's all software. It's not really, it doesn't really affect the hardware in any way. Um, I have the upgraded Harman Kardon system. Uh, I'm gonna just leave, leave it off because I'm pretty happy with the way it is. Um, but it's pretty much adding like, it's all 100% software. It's just a different way they mix the, the audio coming out. Next, we have daytime running lights. Uh, that's pretty self um uh, active. I, you, I do want the halos, the daytime running lights. All right, so display option, iDrive system. Starting animation, there you go. Um, I have it as unassigned, so unassigned is the vault. Um, in your dash, you're going to see the M logo, and as well as the infotainment, you're going to see the M logo startup. I remember <laughs> my previous M4, I used to put on the M performance startup thing. Sorry, not, not M4, my previous 430. But now that I have M4, there's no point of putting a, a specific M variant on it. But if you're interested, you know, you can put on the BMW one, the plain BMW one. Uh, you could also do the Alpino one, or the Rolls Royce, since they're owned by the same, all owned by BMW. All right, volume pop up. So, active. That's pretty like when you change the volume, you'll see that little slider. It's always nice to have. Uh, tire pressure control. Pretty much, I you could code it to only display the pressure only if you don't want if you don't care about temperature. Um, I have temperature and pressure. It doesn't hurt to have more information. So why not? And cover artwork active for when you see your music. You can have it active on your dash. There you go. All right, this is another thing I 
one touch signal five times. Pretty much, you know that if you do a one touch on your indicators, your turn signals, for those of you who do it, use it, if you, pre if you press it beyond the clicking point, it's going to hold it. If you just do a one touch be before it clicks, it's going to blink once or three times. You could change it in your um, car settings. But now, you could if you turn this to active, you now will get an additional option of having to turn five times which is good for um sometimes you want to merge i don't know i feel like three times three blinks isn't enough so five is my preference next we have sports display if you care about it sports display you see what what is shown this is all default i don't really change it i don't really use sports display all right video in motion so so this is what you'll code for if you want if those of you who are interested in watching um video motion so you can put a video on a usb stick put it on your um console and a usb port in your console and watch it like youtube videos you want to download youtube movies you can all watch it on your um infotainment screen um as well as those with android screencasts your videos won't get interrupted when you're driving so that's something to uh, active. It's one of those things that might as well. Doesn't hurt. And once you activate it, it's going to walk you through various settings on the screen. To activate, just follow the instructions on the screen. It'll be perfect. Next, warning of startup. I make sure it's not active. Um, and the rest is not active because I don't want to see the... They give you a warning message. Hey, you know, be careful when using infotainment, yada, yada. There you go. All right. So once you do anything, you'll code it and just follow the instructions if on the screen if you enable the video in motion. Pretty much what, what it entitles is just you taking the iDrive spinning control button and just pushing it up the whole time, and it's going to enable it. Um, and it's going to tell you there's going to be a pop-up on the Beamer code screen to tell you, hey, just push it up and just keep holding, and then you'll see the setting get enabled. There you go. Yeah, okay. All right. So going back, we now we have the instrument cluster. All right. Instrument cluster. There you go. All right. So first sub menu, display option, instrument cluster. Pretty much layout you could change. Um, right now, I have the default from 0 to 200. If you had a 340, 440, it only goes up to 160. So you can enable up to 200. Um, if you want to change your um, cluster to show the Alpina logo and any of that, that's just what you change here. Um, I have the M4 well up to 200 miles per hour, so personally nothing of here interests me. But you know, feel free to experiment with your car. Have fun with that. Um, if you if you drive a diesel uh, car, you can enable diesel logo. If those even exist in America. I know they're popular overseas in Europe. Um, now, and then we have the refresh rate digital speed. So that's how many times per second your uh, speedometer is going to refresh. That's all. Keep it five times per so you have the most accurate speed. There you go. You won't, feel, you won't see the number lag behind. Um, and then you, next thing, fuel reserve warnings. So it gives you two chimes of how much of when you're low on fuel. Uh, you could change the distance. They have some miles and some kilometers. Um, 30, 50 is the default. I'll keep it that way. So, yeah. Going back, receiver audio module. So, whew. All right, so in receiver audio module in RAM, uh, you have active sound design. So active sound design is pretty much a combination of piped in audio through the speakers, depending on which mode you choose, as well as the exhaust button, the underneath your setup button. So with in combination with the exhaust button, it will control how much piped in, 
pretty much artificial engine noise are in the speakers. Um, some people hate it. Some people are fine with it. I'm personally fine with it. Um, I tried it with it in disabled and pretty much it it just was really quiet since isolation here is pretty well. Especially since I don't I still have the stock uh, exhaust. Um, it's pretty quiet. I'd rather just keep the piped in audio. At least it'll feel some sort of engagement. Um, but you can always turn it off right here and it would pretty much stop the fake engine noise some people hate it another thing that people in forums have did mention that like you will technically hear a little bit more noise from your surroundings in in the car so like you know other cars uh road noise because the active no uh sound design also have some noise canceling features in it so isolate you a little bit more from the road but that's something you should experiment with yourself and see what you like. All right. So going back, we have roof function center. Personally, if you have the M4, most most M4s I see have the carbon roof because you know why not. Um, pretty much, I just won't go over into it, but it just controls the roof settings if you. If you're one of those rare M4s, M3 owners who actually option for the sunroof. Alright, so just quickly going through it, it's pretty much confirmation noise for closing the roof, as well as the alarm. Um, nothing too serious. Um, seat module, seat module driver, seat module passenger, that pretty much control the ventilation and the heating of the seats. Uh, ventilation will not, be, will not really be available if you chose the carbon bucket seats. So... Not really gonna go into that. Tailgate module, that's something, that's some of the change I did make. All right, so finally, in the last control unit, we have the tailgate function module. Um, what it does is control the combination of how we could open the tailgate from the remote and with the button inside. Um, pretty much, we enable opening. I What I did is I enabled being able to close the tailgate from inside the car because right now by default you once you pull the le the button to open your trunk your boot um it will open open but it can't close so i if you did close by pushing it down you could close it same thing with the buttons on your remote key fob you you could now open and close with the button which is nice good to have as well as you could also enable sound with so pretty much when you close it with the remote or with the button inside it will give a warning sound before it closes um so yeah make sure remote function open and close that's something to enable if you care about that um i'd click active for the closed tailgate with the remote control without long press because by default if, if you enable the open and close you need to hold it for a while before it actually closes so uh yeah, same thing with the closing tailgate with the interior button as well. So that's all the changes really for the tailgate, just to make your life a little bit easier. All right. So, all in all, that's all the basic changes you can make with the all through going through all the control units. Um, now we're gonna talk about anti dazzle. So anti dazzle is a feature available only for cars with adaptive headlights so if you go and look at your left control stock underneath bc um you should see an adaptive high beams so with adaptive high beams in america we have re relatively archaic laws where um if your high beams can only be on or off right and if there's oncoming cars it has to turn off Which so anti-dazzle is a feature that's only really available in europe and pretty much decoded away from the car once they arrive in America. What it does is unlike the traditional high beam assist where it will open high beams whenever it's available and when it when the front windshield camera detects a vehicle, either their headlights or their taillights, it will disable it. It will go back to low beams. And the anti-dazzle in Europe pretty much allows independent head high beams on both either or their, the headlights. And when it detects a car, it will still keep high beams on just pretty much only disable the lights that will hit the car either in front or behind. Um, I'll 
include a quick video just demonstrating what it's like. So yeah, um, very cool feature, disabled in America. Um, to truly unlock the full feature of Anti-Dazzle, you will need to use ESYS and code it out of their vehicle order. Um, that's a lot harder than Beamer code and not everyone feels comfortable with that. So um, thanks to some forum members who posted a pretty much a simplified way of using Beamer code, you are you could pretty much unlock the anti-dazzle feature for us U.S. cars, um, but it's not a complete unlock. You only get around eighty-ish percent of features, and from my experience, it's not perfect, but it's cool and it's better than not having it. So, I'll show you how to do it using Beamer code and go into their expert mode. Um, I recommend you either print out a copy of the instructions or because switching back and forth from Beamer Code app to the switching back and forth from the Beamer Code app to your photos and stuff wherever you may have screenshot it may result in you disconnecting from the from the um, car. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I'll also post a link to the forum and the instructions down below. Um, as you can see, it's kind of dark outside, so <laughs> this video is taking a lot longer than I expected. All right, so first thing you do is go to the BDC, so your body domain controller. Um, it's going to take a while to load. That's fine. All right, so have you noticed it's getting dark around here? So sudden change of lights. All right, so, so once we're in BDC, body domain controller, we have to go to expert mode. Um, you've... There's a risk that if you do mess up here, you might mess up the car. So what I re recommend you do is you go to backups, make sure there is a, you backed up the car, pretty much all the settings. You see right here today, my time of recording, it's one, th it's January 30th at 517, so just now. So every single time you load into the control, a control unit, it should make a backup for you, but just in case, always double check. All right, so we'll go to expert mode, gives you a warning, making sure, letting you know that if you mess it up, you might mess up your car. So use at your own risk. All right, so we have to go look for three sections. LA1, LA2, and LA3. Let me just search for it instead of... Oh, there we go. All right, so once you find LA Master 1, 2, 3, 4, um, we only need to change options in LA Master 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to try to put the instructions on the screen. So if those of you who are watching want to follow along, let's go do this together. So in LA1, the first option we're going to change is C, BLC, pre-ENA1. So and for what I understand, most of them should be in alphabetical order, so it should be a little bit easier to find. So we got C, BLC, pre-ENA. There you go. Pre-ENA. And... Make sure one. So you see right now there's hexadecimal zero, zero x zero zero and zero x zero one. So make sure it's enabled zero one. There you go. Going back. Next option is LUT FLC forward lighting underscore Y. LUT FLC forward lighting underscore Y. And we have it at AFS. So there you go. AFS. And then we go back. Next, we go to LA Master 2. We have two options in here as well. C, AFS, Eco Level 3, ENA. So, trying to find C, AFS, Eco Level 3. EFS. There you go. C, EFS, Eco Level 3, underscore ENA. Make sure that is enabled. Nice. Going back, we go to C A F S E N A zero one. C F E N A. Make sure it's enabled zero one. Awesome. All right, Google back, and we gotta go to L A Master three. Now this is where most of the changes are in, so just be careful. Um, so the first one is LUT A F S. 
C-O-D-R-V-H-O-R. That should be, is that, yeah, that's my fourth one, so just, just to make sure, L-U-T-A-F-S, C-O-D-R-H-O-R, yes. And make sure it's the first option, standard and knit. Um, yeah. Uh, the other options are what, like laser light for the three series, G, no four series G twenty two, or like the laser US. Uh, we don't want the US; we want the standard. All right, next, LUT AFS DRV HOR, AFS DRV. It's, well, it's right underneath it. Perfect. Um, our option is F O four. Yep. So this is the the long option right here. F O four. Basically, your laser. There we go. Go back. Third, C, CLC, Curve, V2. C, CLC, Curve, V2. Right now, we have that set the option as 23, E, C, E. So, yep, we have that. Perfect. Our next one is V3. V3, we also set it as 28. Perfect. All right, next we have CCLC, EXT, ENA. EXT, so exterior ENA. CCLC, exterior. Oh, okay. CCLC, exterior ENA. And the option is to 0, 01, enable roundabout. Perfect. We got that. And then after that, C H B A dim E N A. C H B A dim E N A. Also have that as enabled. Perfect. Next we have C H B A G F G F H B A. C H B A G F H B A E N A V high. There you go. Uh, it's telling us to make it standard default as 3C standard. So there you go. Alright, and last but not last but not least, C H B A G F H B E N A. So G F H B. Um, keep in mind some of them are confused. One, of, the previous one was G F H B A. This one is just G F H B. So, just double check the options. Make sure you don't go through the wrong one. Some of these are confusing. G F H B A. It's G F H B E N A. There you go. Enable. There you go. All right. So with all those changes, all you need to do is code. And you'll see, um, after the coding is done, you'll see a bunch of warning on the dash about like your lighting's income are failing, errors with the lighting. That's completely fine. Just restart the car and all the lighting should go away. And if there's no coding errors, then you should have at least 80% of anti-dazzle enabled. Um, I'll try to include some videos of how it looks like. And yeah. All right, so thank you guys for sticking along. If this one, this is a long video. I know you see right now it was we had it was like afternoon sun. Now it's like almost all the sun's gone, sunset. So yeah, it's been a long time. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.